I did, what do you, technically I did, yeah, I did get dubs. I'm just not gonna end the stream because I just started. So why would I end the stream? Why would I end the stream when I just oh, started? Oh look, another resubscriber. Thank you very much, Fartmaster Nuts, for the two months of subscription. Fartmaster Nuts, damn, that's a name right there. That's a, that's a great name. Thank you very much, Fartmaster. Really appreciate it, man. Oh look, another resubscriber. Wow. It's another gun cleaning stream. Are you guys excited? Are you guys excited for another gun cleaning stream? I'm excited for a gun cleaning stream. Oh look, stream. another resubscriber. It's gonna be doing that for a second. I don't know why it does. Oh, there, hang on, hang on. I don't know why it does this when oh, I look, change another the scene. But it's like, it, it, it insists on replaying them over again. So. Are we gonna finally see Piper this time? I honestly don't know if I can fit Piper into here. This is a pretty small area and it's hard to fit rifles into it. Maybe. You have another subscriber. Um. Maybe in the uh, in the future, if I can get a bigger desk and I can actually make like a full setup for this, we could we could we could get Piper in here. But right now, Piper will not fit because Piper is one meter long. One meter. Also, these are these ones are replaying. These are replaying. So don't don't think that I'm just ignoring. Oh uh, look, another resubscriber. I'm just ignoring all of these. Fix my sleeves. All right. So don't think I'm just ignoring my my Twitch chat. Am I gonna clean an M1 Abrams, man? It, I'll tell you guys what. If I ever get a tank, if I ever buy a tank or an armored personnel carrier or whatever, if I ever buy one. I promise I will do like a full cleaning of it. I will video the entire thing. You guys will get to see the whole thing. Maybe I'll put it behind a paywall just to really piss people off. No, I wouldn't do that. Anyway, Angry Specialist Sack has nice baby hands. I mean, I wash my hands a lot. I, I don't know what you want from me. I mean, look, I got a scar right there. I don't really have baby hands. I guess I kind of do. They're they're like they're relatively smooth. I get calluses though. I'm just not I'm not hairy. I think you guys expected me to be a lot hairier than I am, and I'm really not. I'm like not I'm not hairy at all. Um, but yeah, I got like a I got like a scar right there. That one's recent. I got one right there. Uh, the one that was on this knuckle is basically gone now. But that's oh, like look, a another 30, resubscriber. That's like a twenty something year old scar at this point. So. That's why that one's almost gone. Uh, yeah, I don't really have any other like very obvious scars. So, thank you very much, Son of Donut, for the twelve months of subscription. Do I at least have a goatee? Yes, I do. Nice attempt to get me to show my face, but no. Uh, I do actually have a goatee. And thank you, Divided Castle, for the one thousand bits. Turning 21 this year and the day I do, I'm going out to get my first gun. What would I suggest? Uh, Glock. Glock 19, Glock 17, Glock 47, Glock 45. Any one of those, any one of those would be a great first gun. I actually really want to, at some point in the near future, I'm going to make a video that is just talking about what are really good guns to get uh, for like first hand guns. Um, yeah. Get a Glock in 50 AE? I don't think they make one in 50 AE. All right. Let's clean guns. Let's clean guns. How does my audio sound? Does my audio sound okay? Do I, am I, do I need to be louder? Do I need to be quieter? Sounds fine. All right. It's not like, because the last, the last gun cleaning stream I did, it sounded like garbage, if I'm being completely honest. Thanks for the recommendation. You are welcome, Divided Castle. Uh, usually, what I, I always suggest to people, if you, if you want to know what to get for your first handgun, I just, I almost always suggest, uh, I almost always will suggest uh, Glock, just because it's like, I like to joke and refer to the Glock 
in 9mm as the Fisher Price Baby's First Gun. Uh, th th they're great. The amount of aftermarket support is ridiculous. So, like, you can buy one and you can leave it exactly how it is because it's perfectly fine. Or if you want to, you could just kit the hell out of it and make it like this super crazy modified Gucci Glock. So, what are my thoughts on SIG? SIG makes good handguns. I like SIG's handguns. Um, I own a couple different SIG handguns. Maybe I can show you. Yeah, maybe I could do that. Piper is an M16A2, or did I give random AR as the same name as my service weapon? Pi the first Piper is an M16A2, yes. The Piper, the rifle that I got on basic training, Piper, was an M16A2. Um, the M16 clone that I have now is an M16A4, and I still call it Piper, just, you know, for giggles. isn't showing guns on stream TOS unless you're cleaning these. Uh, yeah, it's completely TOS, actually. They really don't care. They, you can stream you being at a firing range and they uh, do not care. You guys ready to see the first gun? You ready for the first one? Boop. Look at this. He's a chonky boy. He's chonky. Look at how chonk he is. He is a very chonky boy. I have completely average sized hands, and he is, um, he is chonk. Ooh, hang on, hang on, hang on, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. It's somewhere around here. It is somewhere around here. I know what I can do to give you guys an idea of size. That didn't really rhyme or anything. I really need to order the IKEA shelves for my house. This, this is a set of mechanical calipers made by Mauser because they don't make just guns. It's got a little, it's, it's it kind of reflecting weird. It does actually say Mauser on there, I promise. But it's a pair of completely analog mechanical calipers that are made by Mauser. And this revolver is... How, how chunky is this boy? How chunk is this boy? Oh, if I'm reading this right, and I like to think that I am, this boy is one... Let's see. It takes me a second to read mechanical calipers, sorry. Um, one seven, 1.715 1 inches across. So yeah, chunky boy. Where's the rest of the barrel? Uh, it fell off. We clean gun. We clean gun. Hmm. Love the content. Thank you very much, Mephisto Logic. I really appreciate it. That should work for now. Gloves. The barrel is fine. It was just cold out. It was in the pool. All right, you guys, I really don't appreciate you being mean to the little Smith & Wesson 327. He was in the pool. It's not his fault. Thinking of getting into Twitch streaming as well to supplement my YouTube channel. Do I have any tips? Um, I unfortunately not really. I like only recently have started getting people watching me. To be completely honest, um, 
I wish I could give you like suggestions, but I guess the only the only and, and like the tips I can give you are really they really only they're really helpful to me, but I don't know if they'll help they're helpful to other people. Like I basically have to just leave chat on 20 second slow mode because I got real bad ADHD and it overwhelms my brain if I don't. Um so yeah, slow mode is not necessarily a bad thing. Also, maybe consider uh, having... Maybe consider having, like, follower-only chat for a while, just to make sure that you don't get people showing up and saying a bunch of bad words that get you in trouble. Oh yeah, definitely try to be consistent. That's the one thing that I don't do and I really should do. I'm not consistent enough. If you're just starting on on Twitch, I wouldn't necessarily do subs only chat if you're like just starting because then you're going to get a lot of people that show up and they aren't willing to sub because they don't know who the hell you are and they won't leave. I only do subs only chat if it's like something that I've been really looking forward to and I don't want it spoiled for me. That's pretty much the only time I do subs only chat. This is the shortest barrel I've ever seen. That is a it is a two inch barrel on this little on this little guy. Would I recommend Hops number nine or Remington gun oil for cleaning pistols? Um, probably Hops. However, you'll notice that I don't really use gun oil for cleaning pistols. I basically just, uh, I just kind of wipe the most of the carbon off. If I get really stubborn carbon, then I use like a, then I use like a CLP or an LSA. How does that barrel's size affect this gun's performance? Well. This gun is in 357 Magnum, but ballistically it performs better if you run 38 Special through it. Because the barrel is so short on this gun, when you run 357 Magnum through it, uh, it actually doesn't really, you end up burning most of the powder outside of the barrel because of how, because of the cartridge itself. So you're legitimately better off using 38 Special through something this short as opposed to 357 Magnum. It is kind of a 357 flashbang, yeah. This thing makes a lot of muzzle flash. Um, one of the reasons that I bought this gun, one of the reasons I got this gun is because this is the 327 Performance Center. Um, the version of this gun you might be more familiar with is the 327 R8, which if you've ever played Counter-Strike or CSGO, you're familiar with the R8. This is basically the same gun as an R8, only it's the Performance Center version, so it has uh, a bunch of different features to it that the R8 normally doesn't have. Um, cylinder and barrel housing are made out of uh, titanium, which is really fucking cool. Uh, I like the fact that they made out of titanium. You'll notice that the barrel has like this weird, there's this weird nut, LOL nut on there. Because the inside of the, the barrel that's actually on the inside is a stainless steel barrel and this is basically just a, like a shroud or a housing for it. Um, so yeah, shroud and, or the like barrel housing and then the uh, cylinder made out of titanium, and then the frame is made out of um, scandium, which is like a propri pro bleh, 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 proprietary alloy that Smith & Wesson uses to make their guns really lightweight. I don't have any other barrels for it. Um, I don't think Smith & Wesson will actually sell individual barrels for this gun. I could be wrong, maybe they do, and I'm just unaware of it, but...
Do I have any suggestions on a low profile gas block? Uh, Troy Industries makes a really good one. Daniel Defense makes a really good one. Um, just go with a reputable company. Aero Precision makes a really good one. Do I have a personal favorite revolver? I mean, this is the only revolver I currently own, so this one. <laughs> Obviously, I really like the uh, Mateba, but I also don't want to pay how much it costs for a Mateba. Revolver with quick change barrels of different lengths would be pretty neat. Um, I believe that Dan Wesson makes a revolver. I forget what the name of their revolver is, but Dan Wesson makes a, a bunch of different revolvers um, that come in barrel lengths, and you can change them out relatively quickly. Not like immediately, but pretty quickly. What are my thoughts on the Mark 18? Uh, it's, a, it's a short AR-15. It depends on what you're going to be using it for. I mean, like, if you're trying to use a Mark, or a Mark 18 as, like... If you're trying to use a Mark 18 as a DMR, you're going to be sorely, sorely disappointed. Uh, yeah, dude, the Mate was a great... The Mate was a really fucking cool gun. I wish I could get one, but, man, I... Uh, not going to pay for one. How about the revolver? You could just fire just about whatever you can get into it. Yeah, it's the, um... Hydra? What is the name of it? Oh man, I can't remember the name of the revolver. There's basically a revolver. Oh, Medu the Medusa. That's it. Yep, it's the Medusa. You can basically any cartridge that's 38 caliber, and you can basically just jam that into the cylinder, and it will fire it. It's interesting. How much does it hurt thinking about how many great guns got wrecked from gun buybacks? It doesn't hurt that much because they're really... Most of the time the gun, the people that are bringing guns to gun buybacks aren't bringing good stuff there. So it's whatever. If you look at photos of gun buybacks, most of the time it's just a lot of FUD shit. Oh look, another resubscriber. I'm shaving off the side of this toothbrush. Thank you very much, NBT Thunderbolt, aka Red, for the 23 months of subscription. Damn, man, that's a lot. <sighs> I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. This is only the fifth of my streams I've been able to catch. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I need to have a more reliable stream schedule. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm not gonna go on a whole tear about how about gun buybacks because it would just quite literally be preaching to the choir. Um, but yeah, most of the time gun buybacks are pretty stupid. How's life going? It is going all right. Kind of trying to had a pretty bad migraine earlier, but we're we're getting through it. I lost count on which one I was on. Oh well. Do I have an opinion on people flicking a revolver closed? No, I don't. It's your gun. Do whatever you want with it. I see a lot of people say that doing that is bad for the gun. I also didn't really do it at like full force. I see it. I see a lot of people say that that is like really bad for the gun and you should never, ever, 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 ever do that. But then also like, I really don't think it matters that much. They're usually, it's usually the same kind of people that say that closing the slide on an empty chamber is a bad idea. And again, it doesn't matter. It's your gun, do what you want with it. Honestly, you, you are probably never going to shoot out that gun anyway. I 
When I say shoot out that gun, I mean shoot it so much that, uh... Shoot it so much that it's that it like loses accuracy or something. All right, uh, it is an R8 of a sort. Yes, it's the same model as the Smith and Wesson or as the R8. They're both the Smith and Wesson 327. Uh, but this one is the 327 Performance Center. So this is a little tiny snub nose one. He's a little chunky boy. So chunky. He's very chunky. Like, honestly. Uh, let me see something. Ooh. Let me not knock my desk over. There we go. What makes it the performance model besides the name? Uh, scandium frame. So that's the scandium frame is one, which is a very lightweight alloy. Uh, titanium cylinder, titanium barrel shroud, uh, they trigger work to it. I should have let my hand dry off more before I tried to put the glove on. God damn it. This is just ridiculous. It's Will that cause discharge it if you spin the... We're just gonna take these off and let my hands dry out and do it again. Spinning the cylinder in the revolver is not necessarily the worst thing ever for it, but it's also not the best thing ever. It can basically cause like timing errors. Thank you very much, Kyo Silver, for the 100 bits. Basically the way the, way the revolver functions if you look inside here, you can see this little cutout right there. Hang on, there we go. Right there, that little cutout. When you pull back on the hammer, I can't really demonstrate it because it won't do it when this is uh, when this is open. When you pull back on the hammer, a little arm pops up out of there, and that arm pushes against these little teeth on the cylinder, and that is what advances it to the next round. And theoretically, if you put the thing in there and then like spin it around theoretically you can cause parts to break and that you could get it to accidentally fire when it's not when the cylinder is not fully aligned with the chamber and then making the gun blow up in your hand but you know i really don't hear about that happening to people very often so I'm just gonna do this. And then let that oil kind of soak in for a second. But that's just a theory, a good theory. Whoa. Why does it look like the Enclave symbol? Uh, Cause it's a number eight. Focus, focus camera. It's a number eight and then there's eight dots around it because the revolver holds eight shots. And the Enclave symbol I think is uh, a bunch of stars. Probably, it's like probably 13 stars or something. Because the 13 original colonies because we're real Americans. Oh, whatever. <clears throat> you know, I probably don't really need to worry about the carbon build up on there, but if I don't get rid of it now, then I'm never gonna get rid of it. Thank you very much. Happy accidents for the 100 bits. 
They see the PSA is coming out with a 5.7 MP7 clone. Yes, well, it's not really a clone. It's kind of like, it's like, a really good way to describe it would be the MP7 we have at home. Um, but yeah, PSA is coming out with an, basically like a MP7 styled pistol. They're also coming out with a Krinkov pistol, which I'm very excited about because it's a Krinkov in 5.56 which I have wanted for a very long time, and I know that AK purists will yell at me and tell me that that is stupid and that I should get it in 5.45, but I don't want to pay for 5.45 ammo. I like 5.56 better. So I'm very excited for a Krinkov in 5.56 because I think that will be a lot of fun, and I think that will be really cool. Yep, Daniel Defense is doing a new version of the Hudson H9, which is really cool. PSA, honestly, is kind of going ham at SHOT Show. It's really impressive. They also are doing a Department of Energy Colt SMG clone, which is really fucking cool, and I want one. Uh, they're doing, a, PSA is doing you a lot of really cool subscriber. stuff, and I know, that, I know that it's Palmetto State Armory, and I know that PSA is PSA, but they're doing some really neat things. They're also doing they do a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, why did that not tell me who they were? Oh, thank you very much, German Squidward. Perfect. For continuing the sub. Really appreciate it. Um, PSA is also doing a pump action shotgun that you'll be able to build at your house, which is really fucking cool. Yeah, PSA is doing a lot of really cool stuff. Honestly, I'm really, I'm really impressed with all the cool stuff they're doing. I want to go to Shot Show. Hopefully, I can go to Shot Show soon, or not soon, but like maybe next year I can go. I don't know. We'll see. And I've, I've never looked into how to get tickets to Shot Show, so I have no idea if I'm even eligible to go. You got your PSA rock, but they sent a non-threaded barrel with it. Whoops. Whoopsie doodle. They made an oopsie poopsie. fact for me the bigger the witch's hat is the obje objectively cuter she is I thought it was the crazier she is I thought if she had a really big witch hat that meant she was real crazy I could be wrong though the crazier she is the cuter she is now that that is actually not true because I have met some very, very crazy ladies who were not cute at all. has a big witch hat and is both cute and crazy. She's definitely not reading this message. Hopefully not. Or hopefully she doesn't mind if she call or if you call her crazy. Crazy? I was crazy once. They locked me in a room, a rubber room. A rubber room filled with rats. Rats, I hate rats. They drive me crazy.
pointy wizard hat or wizard hood? Which do I prefer? Either one is good. They both can be good for different reasons. They're not mutually exclusive. You can you can use either one. What was my favorite new New Vegas mod we've played so far? Um, I don't know. We've played a lot of really good ones. I like basically anything by American Weirdo though. His mods are always really fun. I like some of the, the some guy mods. I didn't particularly care for New Vegas Bounties 3, though, but apparently neither did most people. Well, let me rephrase that. I didn't particularly care for the end of New Vegas Bounties 3. Emo only chat. Oh, beep boop. Finally, I can be alone with my own thoughts. Oh God, my own thoughts. You have another subscriber. Thank you very much, Line. Uh, oh goodness, Line Fish Knit. Uh, Liney li Lina Fishna. Thank you very much for the subscription. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry I butchered your name. If I do that, does it just totally bitch up the finish of the titanium? No, not really, actually. It really doesn't need to be. Yeah. Because that's just always going to be gross. That doesn't mean that there's no reason to clean it. But it does mean that I don't really have to go ham on the cylinder face. I 
looks pretty good. Is that... Is that barrel polygonally rifled? If this barrel is polygonally rifled, that is going to be a huge surprise to me. Hang on. No, it isn't. Okay, well, no. Dude, I don't know. I suppose it's a possibility. It also doesn't look clean enough now that I'm looking at it. More barrel cleaning. Yeah, it doesn't really look clean enough to me, so we're gonna do some more of that. Holy hobnob, I like the little uh, pixel art grooving mothmen. They're fun. Oh look, another resubscriber. Thank you very much, Broken Sword 16 for the 19 months of subscription. I really appreciate it. Beep boop. I need to get another 9 mil bore brush, but like everywhere around me somehow is sold out of 9 mil bore brushes. It's really disappointing. Because I really do need a new one. If I got a revolver, what caliber would I recommend? Probably uh, 357 Magnum, because then you can shoot 38 Special. That's probably the cheapest of the revolver cartridges. Yeah, it would be cool to get one in like 44 Magnum or 45 Colt, but then it's like finding ammo for 44 Mag or 45 Colt's kind of a pain in the ass. And at least if you get 357, you can shoot 38 Special and those aren't too terribly expensive. What pistol does Claire start with in the Resident Evil 2 remake? I'm not sure. I'm really not a revolver guy, he said, holding a revolver. I'm really not a huge revolver guy, so I can't tell you exactly what model it is. It's a Smith & Wesson. My guess is it's probably a 600 series, so like a 640 something, 650 something. Wasn't it a bodyguard? It couldn't have been a bodyguard because that game takes place in 1998. And the Smith & Wesson bodyguard series of revolvers didn't exist yet. Um, well, actually, no, there's not to say that it couldn't have been a bodyguard, but it most likely wasn't. My guess is, uh, uh, my guess is there's probably like a Smith & Wesson 640 something. We'll look it up when I'm done with this one, if I remember. I'll probably forget, to be completely honest. I have a bad habit of doing that. What is the cheapest ammo? 22 long rifle. That's probably the cheapest ammo that you can get. Any thoughts on a ultrasonic gun cleaner for cleaning? Uh, I would really like to get one at one point, if only to make cleaning suppressor parts. Or just, well, suppressors. If only to make cleaning suppressors easier. I have a 22 long rifle suppressor and that thing is a pain in the ass to clean. That's looking a lot better. It was pretty, uh, it was pretty gross when I started cleaning it. I mean, you got a little bit of powder burns on like the, the sides of the cylinder, but you know, whatever. If I really care about that, I'll get in there with a wire or with like a nylon, not, not nylon. I'll get in there with a um, brass bristle brush. I have a cavitation ultrasonic cleaner that I've used in my 22 Sparrow can to use a combination of vinegar and hydrogen peroxide and everything comes out beautiful with just, excuse me, with just a wipe. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. I don't know if this one's gonna be small enough. Is MP5 and 22 LR a good idea? I don't particularly like them. That doesn't mean they're a bad idea. I just don't particularly like them. Um, 
I would I would probably just get a uh, I would probably just get a um, Oh look another is instead. Thank you very much Bull Shark for the 6 month subscription. I really appreciate it. Um Yeah, I don't particularly care for the GSG MP5s in 22 long rifle. Uh, specifically because I haven't really heard or seen very good things about them and their customer support is not the best. <sighs> Come on, Grips. Come on, Grips. Come on, Grips banned because they're mp5s yeah there's there's some countries that do that where there's like no you can't have this because it's an mp5 and it's like it isn't actually an mp5 though they just put the word mp5 on the name of it just like i can call my car a ferrari but that doesn't make it a ferrari Yeah, they banned the G11 by name in Canada, which I think is really funny. A gun that they made, like, maybe a thousand of, they banned it in Canada. Because, like, oh yeah, you're totally going to be able to get one of those. It would be like if they made a, a list of prohibited guns in Canada, and then on that list they put, like, a... a I don't know, they, they like specifically put the Javelin anti-tank missile on that list. Just like, why? Well, we don't want anyone to have it. Okay, well, they're not going to be able to get it, so why are you banning it? Okay. Is this a 38? It is a, it's a 357 Magnum, but it will fire 38 special. Yeah, I think that's pretty much cleaned up. This revolver is really fun because it takes, uh, you put moon clips in it, which are these things. Let me get one. Let me get this thing. So it can take moon clips, which are these things. And you need a loading tool, which is this thing, to load them. Here, we're gonna put this down here. So I can show you this, and then there's no, there's absolutely no way it's near any ammunition. So, you take this thing, you put the moon clip on it, like that, and you put the bullets on there, and you snap them into the moon clip. And this way, when you go to load the revolver, You don't have to try to put the rounds in there all, or you, ugh, you don't have to try to put the rounds in there one at a time. You just have a thing that holds all eight rounds that you just drop into the cylinder. It makes it a lot easier. But moon clips are kind of a pain in the ass to unload, which is why you get this thing that looks like a weird broken screwdriver. You put that over the clip and then you just rotate it. Just like that. 
It makes unloading moon clips way easier. Yeah. That's a cool little tool. I'm... I think that's really neat. I think it's a really neat idea. Put those away. Yeah, it's a it's a really neat little tool for loading moon clips like way faster. Because otherwise, if you try to put the um, you try to put one of these into a moon clip without it, you can do it and then you can pull it out of there, but man, it sucks and it's not, it's just a pain in the ass that this makes it so much easier to do. I, I, I like this thing. I think this is a really cool tool. Also, it's made out of like a piece of aluminum and it's all machined and it looks really neat and I like it. I like it, it makes me happy. I like stuff. I like machined things, machined things make me happy, especially when they're like well machined and well put together. It's all very pleasing to me. Put these away. What's my opinion on the Laugo Alien? Uh, it's a really, really fucking cool handgun. I will never be able to afford one, but it's really cool. Um, I think they're really interesting. I like the fact that the hammer swings downwards on the inside of the Laugo Alien. It's neat. You even buy a C96 Mauser. Yes, they are. You can find them on Gunbroker. But they're expensive. Um, yeah, Lago Aliens pretty expensive. All right. Well, I think that one's good. We'll get this guy put away. Also, when I got this gun, when I got this gun, it came with this pocket carry holster, which I think is really silly and optimistic because I'm not sure how you would fit this thing into a pocket. Maybe like a jacket pocket. I can fit it into a jacket pocket but I do find it really funny that it came with a pocket holster because it's just like, uh, I don't know what kind of pocket you're putting this into. Maybe, yeah, maybe a back pocket, but then you get a whole grip sticking out of your back pocket. It's just like, that's pretty obvious what that is. Oh yeah, you can put it in your Jinkos, yeah. Is that a Remora holster? Uh, yes, it is. It's just what, it, it's just what the gun came with. Because this was, this was used when I got it. All right. Throw these away. Not that. Throw those away. Does it do anything? Uh, it actually does. It's got, it's kind of like sticky on the outside of it. It's got um, kind of like a neoprene outside. So it grabs onto pockets. So yes, it does actually do something. Just gotta put that away. And we can emote only chat again. Beep boop. Also, did I thank Bull Shark for the six month subscription? I cannot remember. Thank you very much, Bull Shark. If I did not thank you for the six month subscription, I need to look up something because I said I was going to and then I forgot to look it up. Well, I didn't really forget, but I kind of forgot. Uh, let's see. We're gonna look up what... You have another subscriber. Thank you very much, Logman, for the subscription. I really appreciate it, man. 
Oh, let's see. Oh, no, you know what? You were right. It was a Smith & Wesson bodyguard. Man, I was way off. I get. I guess they had made the bodyguard way earlier than that. Huh. I did not know that the bodyguard was that recent of a gun. I really thought it was a. It was a much older one. Man, I feel. I feel kind of bad now. Um, the revolver that Claire uses in the Resident Evil 2 remake is the. It's called like the SLS 60, which is entirely possible that it's a Smith and Wesson Lady Smith. Um. Huh. I was kind of right. I said I said that it was probably like a Smith and Wesson five or six hundred series, and it's uh, when you when you upgrade it to like the high powered rounds, it turns it into like a six forty nine basically. So I was I was close. I was decently close. Next gun. Next gun. I need water. Are you guys ready for the next gun? I don't think you're ready. I mean, you probably are. What do I know? Hmm. Ta-da! It's the next gun. This is the B&T USW A1. It's a nine millimeter pistol. You have another subscriber. Thank you very much, Invert FPV, for the Prime subscription. Really appreciate it, man. It's a nine millimeter pistol that this one does not have it currently because I have not registered this one as an SBR yet, so I have not put it on there, but I will when I get one. The USW is a 9mm pistol that has a stock to it, so it basically is a pistol that gives you the accuracy ability of a rifle. Um, and it was designed for basically police that wanted to give police members or police officers more accuracy than the standard handgun, because it is, for most people, it's pretty hard to be accurate with a handgun, um, especially at any kind of like longer range. So this gives you the ability to be much more accurate with a handgun out to distances of like 25 meters or more. Um, that's a really interesting it's a really interesting gun, and it basically is a CZ-75 with extra stuff added to it. Uh, internally, it's very similar to a CZ-75. It basically is a... It's a Chris Sphinx, which b &T bought the rights to Chris to make their guns. And then they took the Chris Sphinx and added this thing on the back with a non-moving shroud to attach an optic to. Um, and then this goofy, like, front sight thing on there. This feels like the gun Chris owns from Resident Evil 8. This is actually the exact same gun that Chris owns in Resident Evil Village. Funnily enough, the gun he uses in Village... Here, let me see. No brace in the meantime? Nah, I'll just use it as it is. Uh, wait, really? Yep. Oh, 
Let me see. Give me just one second. Come on. We'll just do this then. What got me into getting diagnosed as ADHD? Because I'm starting to wonder myself. Uh, I got diagnosed with ADHD as a child. I, when I was really little. I think it was in like kindergarten. I was diagnosed with ADHD. Um, but it's only like recently that I uh, got back on medication. Anyway. Where is it? There it is. Ruger Tom at USW with a mini red dot. Sight suppressor and flashlight appears as the USM A1. So this is Chris's gun from Resident Evil Village. It's the same gun. Only he uses, um, it's like a surefire, uh, what, what weapon or what light is that? Uh, I can't remember what light that is. It's made by surefire. It's like an X something. The suppressor that's on it is kind of a surefire SOCOM suppressor, but they put it on a pistol. Um... And interestingly, the serial number for his gun in Resident Evil Village is the date of the first Resident Evil game. So 7-24-1998. It's the, they did like the European dating, so it's date, month, year. So I think that's kind of fun. Same gun. The optic that is on the the optic that this gun is supposed to come with is the um, uh, Aimpoint Nano, and I do not like the Aimpoint Nano. I think the Aimpoint Nano is not great. It's got really bad parasitic drain, so the battery will go dead even if the optic isn't on and it's just sitting there. So that's why I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I contacted BNT and got them to send me a new hood for this that will accept the acro because it is a different mounting footprint so now it is uh, a much better optic at least in my opinion auto mag in that game is broken yeah I was told the 90s ADD ADHD epidemic was confirmation bias and ended up with a lot of over medication. True, but in my instance, I definitely need it. I definitely benefit from it. What is my favorite obscure gun? Probably, it's not really that obscure. I guess like the well rod. Followed up by like the Liberator P4 or PF45. I like that thing too. Even though it's absolutely terrible to shoot, I still like it. I think they're fun. Do I own an FN57? I do own an FN57. It's on uh, my last gun cleaning stream. I cleaned the FN57. You know, I really didn't shoot this that much when I shot it, but because I shot it suppressed the entire time, it got disgusting on the inside. You have another subscriber. Thank you very much, Easy Freezy, for the three months of subscription. I really appreciate it, man. Whatever amount of GoPro to my guns. Oh, eh. look, another resubscriber. Probably not. I don't really, to be completely honest, I kind of don't really see the point. Also, thank you, Inert FPV, for the subscription. I don't know if I missed that or not. Do I think the AR57 is silly? Not really. I think it's fun.
I've never gotten my hands on any Valmet rifles. I would like to, but they're they're kind of like I don't want to call them unobtainium, but they're they're difficult to find. And when people do have them, they're usually very expensive. <sighs> Chilly about suppressors. I'm, I'm, you know, I never thought I was going to own suppressors, and now I own multiple suppressors, but they're all like pistol caliber suppressors, so... Does this gun have Wi-Fi? No, I jailbroke it. I wanted to turn the Wi-Fi feature off, so I had to jailbreak it. Did you give the Hellgas gun a suppressor? You know, I actually don't really want to get a rifle suppressor. I don't know why, but like, I kind of just don't really feel like it. I like having pistol suppressors, and I really should get a rifle suppressor. I just haven't. And it's like I have Surefire SOCOM muzzle devices on basically almost all of my rifles, so I don't know why I haven't bought a Surefire SOCOM suppressor. I just keep not doing it. That would probably be a smart thing to do, though, would be to buy a buy a suppressor for my rifles. This gun gets real dirty when you shoot it suppressed. Buy it now, you'll want it by the time I can pick it up. And see, the thing is, I've thought about getting one multiple times over a very long time period, and I still just keep not getting one and then not regretting that I have one or that I don't have one. So, whatever. Maybe at some point I'll get one. I don't know. They're just like... They're kind of expensive. He said cleaning a very expensive handgun. Do I have any guns that are near or over the 50 year old mark in my collection? Yes, I have a beep boop. I have a um, Colt 1911 that was built in 1918. And I have a Beretta Model 34, or excuse me, Beretta Model 1934 that I don't know exactly when was made, but I know it was not at any point before the 1950s. So, that one I know for a fact is relatively old, I just don't know exactly how old. I'm just gonna put this down there until I'm done cleaning this. Because it's in the way. It is in the way.
gun cleaning. Gun cleaning, go. I had a lot of people asking me like what gun cleaning oil I use and I don't really use a gun cleaning oil. I basically just kind of like dry wipe everything down. Because here's the thing, if you completely soak something in gun cleaning oil, then now in addition to cleaning all the carbon off that thing, you also have to clean all the oil off that thing, which makes a big mess. So sometimes, since when has the mode only been on a 15 minute cooldown? I think since always. I think it's always been a 15 minute cooldown. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's always been 15 minute cooldown. Anyway, I think it's easier to just try to clean the carbon off the gun than try to clean the carbon and an absolute shitload of oil off of a gun. But your mileage may vary. Oh goodness, so many gifted subscriptions, you must really hate money. Thank you very much, Brute Force. For the five gifted subscriptions, I really appreciate it, man. Oh look, another thank so much. subscriber. And thank you, that guy Adam, for the two month subscriptions. Two month hype, hell yeah, man. Two months. I really like this pistol. I think it's really cool. It uh, it groups very, very well. It is a very accurate handgun. Oh, Uncle Larry has been achieved. have to make an appearance. I don't know if Chad is very excited about Uncle Larry or very worried about Uncle Larry. Thank you very much for the kind words, White Jack 55X. Hopefully at some point you can start getting some more cool stuff. Which internal organ did I have to sell to get that USW? Uh, not if I'm much set to save another up for a while. Thank you very much, Decaying Reaver, for the 27 months of subscription. That's many, 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 many months. Hmm. 
probably good enough, honestly. Clean this barrel out. You have another subscriber. Also, thank you very much, Whitejack55, for the uh, one or for the one month subscription. Thank you very much, German Squidward, for the bits. Hope you and Mrs. Hazard are doing well. If money were no object, would I go HK or CZ? Uh, HK. If money's no object, then yeah, I'm just going like almost entirely HK. Unfortunately, money is an object. My favorite HK handgun? Uh, probably the Mark 23 SOCOM. Even though I don't shoot it as much as the other HK handguns I own. But yeah, probably the Mark 23 SOCOM. Just because it's so freaking cool. Yeah, that's good. That is clean. Anything such as a one caliber. Um, yes, there would be stuff classified as a one caliber, but usually then it's just classified in millimeter. Grease is that? Uh, it's a TW25 Grease. I, I like this Grease quite a bit. I think it works very well. bit my glove. vibing to right now it is the chill vibes and relaxing gaming music mix three hours twitch stream safe background music uh video 
it's just all songs that are part of the like approved YouTube music library. So basically you can just put them in YouTube and Twitch videos and nobody cares. What is my favorite gun I know I'll never be able to obtain? Uh, Borchart C93 would be one. Um, an M79 grenade launcher would be another one. Uh, um, Burgess folding shotgun, that would be one. Set Me Amelia would be one, uh, H and K G11. Um, PSA is making a thumper. They're making a 37 millimeter launcher and it has more in common with the M203 than an M79. I specifically want an M79, which is difficult to get. Shogun Inertial, yeah, that would be another one. That would be another one that I would really want. Interesting thing about this gun is that it doesn't actually have an external safety on it. So because this is based off of like the CZ-75 or the Chris Sphinx, and the Chris Sphinx itself doesn't have a safety, it just has a just has this little lever which is a decocker. Um, so yeah, basically you would just, you know, decock it, holster it, and then your first trigger pull is a double action, and then everyone after that will be single action. Why wouldn't I want a 40 millimeter launcher? I do want a 40 millimeter launcher. That's why I want an M79. All right. I think there's stuff in the bottom of this magazine. I'm actually gonna try to clean that out really quick. If I can figure out how to take this magazine apart. So I've never taken this mag apart. Oh, okay, so that's how you do that. Oh, easy peasy. Ah, see, I knew it. There was crud in the magazine. See, look at that. Ooh, that's a piece of a jacket. Where'd it go? That's not good. I need to look at my suppressor. Ah, Digital Vega just opened the package. Ah. <laughs> ah. I sent Digital Vagrant a funny thing. I'm not going to talk about what it is though. If you want to if you want to if you want to find out what it is, you'll have to ask him in one of his streams. Laughter at, yeah, I'm glad you liked it. All right, I'm gonna have to check my suppressor. Because that is not good. See, I set it aside. Well, there's a lot of carbon in it. That's not too surprising. Great asset, great, great asset. Great asset, great, great asset. Currently committing forgery of MTG cards because you're not gonna pay $50 for cardboard? Hell yeah, man. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wanna pay 50 bucks for cardboard, but you know, I, I, under, I understand. I, I totally get it. 
Bad suppressor. You stay right there. That's a naughty suppressor. What happened to lodge a piece of jacket in the magazine? Um, because I was using a suppressor, it's entirely possible that a piece of the jacket from one of the rounds uh, struck one of the little baffles inside the suppressor. Basically, the bullet went through the suppressor, struck one of the little baffles, and it peeled a piece of jacket off, which went back through the barrel, down into the gun, and then inside the magazine. I think. I lost that little piece of jacket, so now I have to try to find it when I'm done streaming. It's also possible that it was just a copper-colored chunk of carbon, which does happen. So baffle strike, maybe. Maybe baffle strike, maybe also piston strike, because it is possible that it could have hit the piston. It's also possible that the feed ramp of the gun just peeled a chunk of, uh, a chunk of projectile off. Um, there's a lot of possibilities for what it could have been. Baffle strike would be more likely if I found it just like inside the suppressor. The nice thing about this specific suppressor is this is the Omega 9, this is the Silencer Co. Omega 9K, and this thing is built like a fucking tank. Um, this is a very, very good suppressor. It's a great asset, great, great asset, great asset, great, great asset. Because I'm going to be completely honest, that is quite the journey for a bullet to go out the barrel, into the suppressor, skip off part of it, and then the, belt, the chunk comes all the way back, goes down in here, and then somehow falls into the magazine. Yeah. Also, could have been a chipped or a bad jacket. That is entirely possible. I don't see anything on the inside of the suppressor that looks like a projectile struck it. See? It doesn't really look like a round struck anywhere in there, and I also don't see any damage to the outside of the suppressor. Um, so it doesn't look bad to me. Also, I feel like I would have noticed while I was shooting the suppressor if that had happened. I don't know. It could be it could be all kinds of different things. But yeah, it's very unlikely that it would make it all the way back there. It is possible that it could have made it back down the barrel and then into into like the inside of the receiver and then later while the gun was shooting it fell down into the magazine. Who knows? I have no idea. There are lots and lots of possibilities for how that jacket could have gotten in there. And like I said, it also could have just been a, uh, it also could have just been a, uh, copper colored piece of carbon. That is a very real possibility. Uh, oh, I saw one about water. Where was that? I saw a question about suppressor. Does water ruin suppressors if you rinse it like a funnel? No, it actually doesn't. Um, yeah, it actually does not ruin suppressors if you rinse it out. You can rinse it out. You would just want to make sure that there's no more water in it before you... Uh, You'd want to make sure there's no more water in it before you shoot it. However, there is a thing that is le this legitimately a thing called uh, running a suppressor wet. And you can just pour water into the suppressor. And um, you just pour water into the suppressor and run it with a bunch of water in there. And it'll actually make it a lot quieter for a few rounds. And when I say a few, I mean like less than 20, like 10 rounds. Um, and then all the water burns off. You can also run oil in a suppressor, but it, it's any, running a suppressor wet is a huge mess. If you do it in an indoor range, they will be very mad at you. Usually when you run suppressors wet, you're running it in what's like a, what's like a sealed suppressor. So like a wipe type suppressor. Um, but like you can run it in just an open suppressor. 
Well, we've seen this in Resident Evil 8 and you thought it was something the devs made up. Nope, it is the B&T USW. It's a really cool gun. Was the well rod ever used like that? I would presume you probably could have used the well rod as a wet type of suppressor. Um, but I feel like, again, it would probably be a really big mess to try to fill it with oil. All right, that's, that's probably good. Oh, at some point I really should actually try to clean this spring off. It's got a lot of carbon on it. But probably not, excuse me, probably not right now. I don't really necessarily need to do that. Where is the white lithium grease? Where's my favorite, what is my favorite caliber? Probably nine mil, honestly. I really like nine mil. Was my favorite fighter jet? Um, hmm. I'm very partial to the F-16, but that's probably just because it's small. Uh, the F-22 is cool. Maybe the F-15. I don't know. I kind of like bombers a little bit more than than fighter jets, to be, like, completely honest. Thoughts on the PSA MP7 we have at home coming to market? I think that's cool and I want one. Yeah, I think the, the PSA's new, like, MP7 thing is really cool. And I, I honestly want to get one. Tommy Builds is going full on MP7, though. Yes, they are. I'm signed up for notifications on it, though I'm probably not going to be able to get one, but I really want to. I really do want one of the Tommy Bill MP7s. God oh, damn it, there's still carbon inside this thing. I know I'm not gonna get all the carbon out, but I wanna get most of it out. There we go. That's that should be all of it. No, oh, actually, I'm gonna get a flashlight and look on the inside of this thing. There it is. Yeah, I really don't see anywhere where it could have skipped off on the inside, so it should be okay. Yeah, there's, I don't see anywhere where it would have skipped off. Beep boop, emote only chat. Would an ultrasonic cleaner help? I would like to get an ultrasonic cleaner at some point. I will get one and um, then I can just like, then I can just chuck these things in there. Just have it blast the inside of it out. Suppressor. Oh, wait, hang on. Hang on. Did 
There we go for the real for the real Resident Evil Seven look. Now it really looks now it really looks like Resident Evil Seven. Isn't that neat? That's a neat. That's a neat. That's that's a neat little gun right there. That's a neat pew pew. Oh, okay. Put some stuff away. And then we probably should have a, have a nice visit from Uncle Larry. Because I know how much chat loves it when Uncle Larry shows up. Chat loves Uncle Larry. Brush, cleaning tool, Hex loves Uncle Larry and that's all that matters. <laughs> jacket laying around down there. I don't know where that went. If that was actually a jacket, I don't know. You know, not that it would do any good, but I could use the big stupid magnet that I have. It's fine. I'm sure I'll find it with my foot later. I'll show you, I can show you guys the big stupid magnet. It's not really that big. See, it's the big stupid magnet. It's a mag switch. This thing is neat because it's, um... It's not magnetic most of the time. But if you rotate it... Never mind, that pen isn't magnetic anyway, so that's a terrible example. Uh, it's not magnetic most of the time. See, but when you rotate it, now it's magnetic. Isn't that neat? Also, this is a meteorite. I just, I just, I literally just used a chunk of space rock to demonstrate how this thing is magnetic. All right. Timey stuff has cute emotes. I like the little penguin. The penguin's very cute. And we need to just get rid of this. Carbon residue. That is a lot of carbon residue, geez. That suppressor was gross. Why do you get so gross suppressor? Why does the suppressor get so gross? Why? Why is the sight so far back? Um, the reason the sight is so far back is because it's mounted to a hood on the gun so that when the slide reciprocates, this does not move. So it means that this stays stationary where, while the rest of it, uh, um, while the rest of it cycles, so.
which keeps the optic in one spot, which means that it's not like, it's, it's not getting like weird impact on it. Anyway. Anyway. Um. Yeah, we gotta get Uncle Larry to show up. Is this near the end of the stream? Well, it's the end of the gun cleaning part, but we're gonna, Uncle Larry will show up in, uh, in just a second here. So let me figure out how I'm gonna do this. And then we can do a little bit more streaming. I'll be right back.